Sometimes a problem feels so easy to understand, right? And if you try to solve it on your own on a piece of paper, you are able to come up with a solution. But as soon as you start to write the code, you realize that, okay, where do I even begin with? It happens, right? I'm talking about the problem maximum binary tree on lead code. Let's see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain the problem statement and we'll look at a sample test case. Going forward, we are going to see how you can use the divide and conquer approach to break down this problem into parts and you will find the solution very similar to the quick sort method. After that, we will also use a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given an array nums and you have to create a binary tree based on a certain algorithm. So in a sample test case, you can see that I have this array and using certain rules, I have to create a binary tree. So what are those rules? First of all, the maximum number will be the root element. Out of all of these elements, you can see that 6 is the maximum, correct? So my root will be 6. Now you have to find out the left child and the right child. And how do you determine that? The left child will be the maximum of the left subarray. So you can see that in this left subarray, the maximum element is 3, right? So the left child of this tree will be 3. And similarly, you have to find the right subchild also. The right subchild is the maximum of the right subarray, correct? The right subarray is 0, 0,5, right? And out of these elements, the maximum is 5. So your right child will be 5. Moving on, you have to repeat the same algorithm again and again until you exhaust out all of the elements of your array. So in this example, after 3, you have to have its left subchild and right subchild, right? You don't have anything on the left, but on the right, you have 2, 1. Out of them, 2 is greater. So 2 will be the right subchild of 3. Similarly, you get a 1 over here and the left subchild of 5 will be 0. So this is your final binary tree and this in fact is your answer. Now, if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, feel free to first try it out on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. Once again, let us take up our sample test case. And this time, we will try to approach this problem programmatically. We already saw how easy it is to solve this problem when you have a pen and paper. You just keep on identifying, okay, this is my largest element and I will pick it for my root. Now I have two subparts. I will pick my largest element. This will be the left and this will be the right. This is the general approach you follow, correct? So how do you do this programmatically? Think about it. You are given with this array, right? And the first step is very, very obvious. What do you have to do? You have to pick the greatest element or the maximum element as your root node, right? So out of all of these elements, you can see that 6 is the highest element, right? So naturally, you will pick up 6 as your root node, correct? And now comes the tricky part. You have to find the trees in the left child and the right child as well, correct? And now try to think. All of these elements, they will be a part of the left child, correct? And all of the elements in the right subarray, they will be a part of your right child, correct? So in a way, what just happened is you divided your problem into two different parts. What happens is I get two new sub problems now. One of the sub problem is 3, 2, 1 and the other sub problem is 0, 5. So now when you have to construct the left child and the right child, you are going to follow the same approach. Once again, you are going to assume that, okay, this is my sample array. Now forget everything else. If this was your sample array, what will be the root element? The maximum element will be the root element, right? And that is three. So you just pick up three and you write it down in your left child, right? And now observe once again, you took care of your element three, right? So now you have once again divided your problem into two halves. On the left, you don't have anything. And on the right, you once again have a smaller sub array, correct? So this tells me that for element number three, I will have something in my right child, but nothing over here in my left child, correct? So your problem broke down into additional steps. 
Now my problem just reduces to 2 comma 1. And once again, you're going to forget everything else. You will just assume that, okay, this is my problem statement. What is the largest element I can pick? I can pick up element number 2. And I will use this in my right child over here. So this is how you see, we are able to divide the problem into separate parts and then use a recursive property to determine all the different children of the tree. Try to look up this part as an exercise on your own. You have this array, right? So this is your only problem statement. You don't have to look at anything else. What is the maximum element? The maximum element is 5. So you are going to put down 5 over here. This array does not have any right subarray. So you won't have any right child, but you have a left subarray and this will go in over here as your left child. So if you try to look, this is very similar to the quick sort algorithm. What do we do in quick sort? We fix a pivot and then we separate all of the elements to the left and all of the elements in the right. Correct? So we can have a similar approach over here. Initially, this is my entire array, right? So just take this array and find out the largest element. You found six. Okay. And now to find out the left child and the right child, this is my sub problem. And this is my other sub problem. Just use this method in recursion. And once again, I will try to fetch the maximum element from my left array and the maximum element from my right array. And you're going to keep on doing this until and unless your entire tree is constructed. To make things look even better, let us quickly do a dry run of the code so that you can actually visualize how this is even happening. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have a sample array that is passed in as an input parameter to the function construct maximum binary tree. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and test cases are also available in my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving on with the dry run. First of all, we have a sanity check that, okay, if your array is null, you need to simply return. And then after that, we have our main crux. This is the build method, which will actually construct your entire binary tree. And watch closely what we are doing in over here. In this build method, we are passing in our array. So this array has all of the elements with which you have to construct your tree. Correct? And after that, we pass in the starting index and the ending index. So right now, when I have the entire array, I will start my array from 3 and end it all the way up to 5, right? Because you have to pick the maximum element out of the entire array, correct? So I pass it in. And now watch what happens in your build method. Once again, I have a sanity check that if start is greater than end, I simply need to return because it means that all of my iteration is over. And now we try to identify that, okay, what is the maximum element? So I will try to find out the maximum index. That is the index where the maximum element is located. So I iterate through this loop and I find out that, okay, my maximum element is six and the maximum index is three, correct? You will soon understand why we need the index and not the element. So you got your index at three, right? And using this index, first of all, you will create the root node. So to create the root node, I create a new tree node and then I refer to this index. This will now start my tree. So I get a root node, which is six, correct? And now you have to find out that, okay, what will be the left child and what is the right child? If you try to remember how we came up with the solution, as soon as you identify that, okay, this is my maximum element. You have to identify this is your left sub array and this is your right sub array. And this is where the index comes in very, very handy. Just look at what I'm doing over here. I call this build method again. I pass in the nums and now I will pass in the start variable. So the start is still at three, right? But where does it end? This has to end right before this index, correct? And that is why I needed the index and not the element itself. So this loop will run again. And this time you are going to find out that, okay, three is my maximum element out of all of these three elements, right? So this will continue to construct your tree. And once this is over, you are going to look into the right child of the root node. And for the right child, once again, just look what we are doing. We pass in the nums array. That is your entire array. And look at it, my start and end indexes have changed. The start now starts at index plus one. 
and it ends at the last value. So this kind of gives you a new sub problem which passes in again as an input to this method itself. And now you are going to get five as your right child. So you can see how this tree gets constructed step by step. And once this method ends, you will have your entire tree constructed. The time complexity of this solution will be order of n square because in a worst case, you might have to iterate through the array again and again entirely to identify the greatest element. And the space complexity of this solution is order of n because you are using recursion and that will take up some space in your memory. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that whenever you see problems on binary trees, do keep in mind that recursion and divide and conquer algorithmic approaches are your friend. Because a tree has a similar property throughout all of its nodes, right? A root, a left child and a right child. So effectively, something that you can apply on the root node, you can also apply that same property on the child nodes as well. So that is the only property that you need to keep in mind when solving problems on trees. In this problem also, you saw the same thing, right? Once you identified, okay, how do I pick the root element or the first element? That is how you have to pick all of the other elements, right? So while going through this video, did you face any problems? Or have you found an even better approach to solve this problem? I know that the time complexity will be order of n square, but certainly there can be many different ways by which you can improve this time complexity. So tell us all of that in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also let me know what problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.